farmers here in Stevenson County. Almost every day you can find stories about farmers and what they're doing. There are stories too about the land. A dozen years ago, the farmers here, like those in most every other part of the country, were plowing their crop rows straight. Very often that meant straight up and down hill. With this kind of farming, they lost rich soil with every hard rain. Gullies were eating into the land, and soil was washing down the straight rows, just as it was doing all over the Corn Belt and in the south and east and west. There was sheet erosion too, skinning soil from unprotected fields. It was an evil thing, this erosion, and it didn't stop at fence lines. It went on from one farm to another, as long as the water poured downhill. In November 1929, the county farm advisor decided it was time for a demonstration of terrace building. A number of farmers turned out that day. They paid close attention to V.J. Banter, the farm advisor, while he explained in one step after another how a good terrace should be built. But Banter knew even then that terracing was only a beginning, that other measures would have to follow. Already the Freeport Journal had called erosion the most serious problem on many Illinois farms. In addition to terracing, Banter encouraged liming and the application of phosphate, all to protect and build up the soil. But by and large, most farmers kept on the old way, and it was the same all across the country. Millions of acres were being ruined, millions damaged. In Washington, Congress took notice, and in April 1935, declared that soil erosion had reached the proportions of a national menace. It established the Soil Conservation Service in the Department of Agriculture and directed it to carry out, in the public interest, a nationwide program of soil and water conservation. Four months later, part of Stevenson County was selected as the site for a major demonstration of modern conservation farming methods. This was just one of many such demonstrations set up by the service throughout the country. office in Freeport, Banter took up his conservation work with a new interest. This time, something was going to happen. He talked earnestly with farmers of the county about the new program, urged them to take part in it. He told them about the dangers of erosion and about the need for conservation. It was an uphill job, but this time he had allies. Technicians of the Soil Conservation Service were on hand. They held meetings and demonstrations, but they did something even more important. They went to work with the farmers out in their fields and pastures, helped one after another put conservation on the land. One of their first jobs was to help farmers lay out level contour lines for contour farming, terracing, and strip cropping. Getting on the contour was just one step. Conservation plans were drawn up for entire farms because work on one or two fields with one or two practices simply wouldn't do the job. The farm plan included all the different measures needed to protect and use each acre to the best advantage. Not all the farmers took to conservation right away. Some thought they couldn't afford it. Others said erosion on their land wasn't worth bothering about. But each year, more and more farmers did change to conservation farming. It stopped erosion, increased production, and an ever-growing number agreed to cooperate with the Soil Conservation Service, agreed to follow a conservation system for five years in return for technical help and other aid. The demonstrations were largely a government venture, and they did make a good beginning. But it was soon clear that for permanent conservation on a nationwide scale, the main responsibility would have to be assumed by the farmers themselves. It was their land, and they controlled it. Thousands of farmers in all parts of the country were ready and eager to take on the job. But how could they organize themselves? What was the best way of going about it? These were the questions they were asking. In Illinois, the answers came on July 9, 1937. 
That day, the Illinois Soil Conservation District's law was signed, making it possible for farmers to join together locally and form soil conservation districts if a majority wanted to do so. In Stevenson County, they talked over the new law. They found out that in a district, farmers could develop their own soil conservation program and say how it would be carried out. They learned that to organize a district, 25 or more landowners would first have to petition the State Soil Conservation Board. Sentiment being what it was, that was easy. More than 400 landowners in the county signed the petition. A public hearing came next. That's provided in the law, too. Everyone in the proposed district area has a chance to be heard by the state board to speak either for or against the idea. What percentage of our topsoil has already washed down the river? At least half of it in the last 100 years. Well, at that rate, how long will it take to wash the other half? Another hundred years? Less than that. The thinner the soil gets, the faster it washes away. Most of it was lost in farming in square fields up and down the hills. We became interested in this soil conservation program quite a few years ago. The reason was we were losing something. The proper thing is to plan the farm in a new pattern. Farm according to the topography of the land, keep the soil at home. I have practiced contour farming for six years, and I think it fills one of the largest needs of the farmers of Stevenson County. I've increased production on our farm 100% in five years. I am concerned about these youngsters of ours that are coming on, whose heritage of rich soil is being destroyed by our prevailing farm methods. The economic threat is grave, but even more serious are the social implications of these wasteful practices on our future generations. In an area near here at one time, there were 25 farms in a school district. Now there are only 10. The other 15 had topsoil loss. I think that demonstrates the need for such a program. The program ought to go through, especially so those who use the program will improve their land. We need a permanent organization. One reason why a soil conservation district furnishing only technical service will be most successful is that we will be doing the work ourselves and then we'll take better care of our terraces and strips. When the actual voting began, there wasn't any doubt about what a majority of the farmers wanted. a second election, a popular vote to name a board of directors, the five men who would manage the affairs of the district. The directors studied erosion throughout the district and the conservation problems ahead. They talked with other farmers, with soil conservation service technicians, and with a county farm advisor. They learned the wishes and the opinions of the farmers themselves. And out of all this, they developed a broad soil conservation program for the entire district, a program outlining the facts of the present and the goals for the future. It was the farmers' own program, and along with it, they prepared a work plan, setting forth the ways and means they would use to reach the district's goals. Program and Work Plan, the district's own guide to a better future. At their next meeting, the directors of the district voted for quick action. 
It's going to take a long while before all the land is used right and all the conservation measures are on the ground. And we're going to need some help, too. We ought to call upon the Extension Service to give us help with education and the Soil Conservation Service to give us technical help so that the work will be done right. They're getting it, too. On the basis of the district program and work plan, they're getting help that individual farmers working alone would have had a hard time getting. And they're getting this help out on the land, in the fields and pastures, where they need it most and where it does the most good. The old demonstrations were all right as far as they went, but they didn't go far enough. They didn't reach enough farmers, didn't get enough conservation on the ground. But with the Soil Conservation District, the farmers are making real progress. More and more of them are adopting conservation. Farm after farm is being protected against erosion. The district program is the farmer's own program, designed to do the things they want done. And it's succeeding because the farmers are working together, each with his neighbors, in a common cause that all of them understand. fields and pastures, a transformation is taking place. Acre after acre is being treated according to its individual needs and put to the use for which it is best suited. That's the only way to get real conservation. There's no guesswork about it either. They're learning the cold facts about their land. Yes, the district has become a field of action, action by the farmers themselves, carrying out their own conservation plans for their own benefit but with each bit of work fitted carefully into the whole district plan, and each bit of work bringing the farmers one step closer to realization of their common goal. Organizing, the farmers have found the strength that comes with numbers. Together, they are able to buy or borrow materials and equipment they could not otherwise get. They are able to solve land and water problems that require joint cooperative action on several farms. And they are able to plan ahead with assurance and make their own decisions. By working together and developing a program for their entire district, they are able to enlist the aid of many agencies, public and private. All this work is paying off. Crop production has increased. Conservation farms are getting greater yields per acre and per farm. At the same time, erosion is being cut down and so are the losses of seed and fertilizer. Operating on the level along the contour also helps store water in the soil to nourish crops through dry seasons until the time for harvest. And farmers are learning too that harvesting and all the other operations are easier on the contour. It takes less time, less power, 
and there's less strain on the equipment. Pastures have been improved from the ground up. Conservation farms are producing more milk per cow, per acre, and per farm. In one recent study, covering a three-year period, records show that conservation farms had produced 20% more meat and 12% more milk than farms which had not yet turned to conservation. The same study showed that livestock income was 23% greater and total farm income from all sources 14% greater on the conservation farms. That's worthwhile any year. There's even an element of beauty about conservation. Curving strips like these are easy to look at and satisfying. But they have more than beauty. They are symbolic of a new and better agriculture. Stevenson Soil Conservation District, you can see America at work, making its future more secure. Here, just as in more than 1,300 other districts from coast to coast, farmers are accepting their responsibility for the nation's soil. They're joining together in districts because they know that only by working together can they do their job. That's the way we do big things in a democracy, together. And although the districts belong only to the farmers and ranchmen who organize and operate them, all Americans and future Americans will share in the rewards. Mm -hmm.